Hi all and welcome back to my channel and today we are going to determine if the Think phone lives up to the legendary reputation of the ThinkPad laptops. Now I'm sure that you are familiar with Lenovo's ThinkPad line and the fearsome reputation that it's achieved. I'm pretty sure that almost every working person in the entire world is even seen in office environments as used one or at least seen an example at some point because they are literally everywhere. Back when I was in high school, our state's government actually gave everybody in year 9 a free ThinkPad that I have unfortunately misplaced but I would love to do a video on it one day. But from memory, while it wasn't the fanciest laptop in the world, they were supremely well built and survived just about anything, which is something that you can't say with today's Chromebooks that schools love to use. But while ThinkPads were professional, they were also quirky and that's why so many people adore them. And the quirkiest feature of them all was most notably something that I affectionately call the red nipple, but I think it's actually called the track point. Now trackpads have come a fair way in the past 20 years, so I don't think that anybody actually uses the track point anymore, but what it provides is something that I believe is sorely lacking in a lot of tech products, and that is character. The track point imbues what are fairly unexciting business laptops with a sense of fun. In a sea of mediocre Windows laptops, Laptops, what makes a ThinkPad stand out above them all, as good as they are, is the red nipple. So let's see if there's a sense of fun on the ThinkPhone. And gosh, what took so long? Lenovo has owned a Motorola for close to a decade now and has had plenty of chance to capture that business market that BlackBerry sadly left behind. But better late than never, I suppose. So let's take a look. But before we do, make sure that you've subscribed. If you want to see more videos like this, please give me a like and comment if you are interested in this phone at all. Firstly, let me say that the hardware is exactly how I imagined a ThinkPhone would look. It's sleek, understated, rugged, and also has a hint of fun. Firstly, in the hand, it feels very slim. I don't know if it's just because I've gotten used to extremely blocky iPhones recently, but this tapered aluminium frame just feels fantastic in the hand, despite being technically slightly thicker than an iPhone 14 Pro. At 188 grams, it also feels surprisingly light for the size, which makes it around 50 grams lighter than an iPhone 14 Pro Max, which definitely is rather impressive. On the front, we've got a 6.6 inch OLED display with some of the slimmest symmetrical bezels I've ever seen on an Android phone. It's definitely quite a sight to behold and would make tech Twitter very happy. Also on the screen, there is a punch hole cut out for the 32 megapixel camera on the top that to be fair is not especially impressive but it does work reasonably well I mean can we just please go back to having a reasonable amount of megapixels for the front-facing camera because that might actually make the photos look better and down below we also have the under display optical fingerprint reader which as you can see works very nicely but it is positioned a little low for comfort but you do get used to it on the right side of the phone we have the power button and also the volume keys. It's actually quite refreshing to uh, have a power button that doesn't have a fingerprint reader anymore, so it is very slim. And on the other side, we have a fun addition, which is called the red key. Very creative. <laughs> As you can see, it's quite a funky looking textured button that can be programmed to do a variety of things, like launch apps and stuff like that. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, but at least it is a mildly interesting. What's also mildly interesting is the back of the phone because on the back we don't have glass like every other phone this year. Rather we've got a soft touch plastic rear panel that appears to be a carbon weave pattern and it looks and feels a lot like the ThinkPad X1 carbon surface or at least that's what I'm told. But to me it looks more like the BlackBerry Q10, which was one of my favorite phones that I've ever used. Well, I do love the feel of soft touch plastic when the phones are new, just be aware that they don't all age brilliantly, as after a decade or so, a lot of them do start to degrade and become a little bit sticky, a bit like this BlackBerry is uh, beginning to do. But either way, right now, the phone both looks and feels fantastic. On the top left hand side, we have the camera module, which contains a 50 megapixel camera with a relatively large one in 1.5 inch sensor we've also got a 13 megapixel ultra wide which I think is 
that one maybe? <laughs> While the ultra wide's okay, it's not that impressive. Um, even less impressive though is the third sensor, which is a depth sensor. I mean, do these even do anything? Because I'm pretty unconvinced. The uh, portrait photos are good, but it's no better than any other phone. But to be fair, iPhone Pro models do have LiDAR, which is sort of similar to a depth camera. And finally, on the bottom, we've got the ThinkPhone logo. That looks pretty cool. It says ThinkPhone by Motorola, and I think that the red dot does look very funky. But I do wish that it was a glowing LED bulb, although I do understand Stand that would look uh, rather tacky. The stereo speakers utilize a similar format to most phones these days with a bottom firing one accompanied by a top firing earpiece. And while they do sound pretty good, they're not class leading. And something else that's also not class leading is the vibration motor. While not awful, it isn't the sharpest thing around. I'm not sure what they're doing differently here, but the vibration motor felt really good on some other Motorola products that I've tried recently, like the 2020 razor and also the edge 30 pro uh, maybe it's the uh, soft touch back plastic um, but it just doesn't feel as good and although it's exactly what the doctor ordered it's a nice premium Android phone that's got some ThinkPad influence and the hardware is great and quite a refreshing sight after uh, using a million different glass on glass slabs but what is inside well we have the snapdragon series 8 gen 1 processor which while isn't the latest chip in the world it's still very very brisk we've also got a very reasonable 256 gigabytes of storage and also eight gigabytes of ram there are higher capacities available but just not in australia despite that the performance is just honestly incredible just impeccable i just don't think that i've ever used a faster feeling phone than this one like just look at how smooth that is i know that you're watching in 25 frames a second but i just want you to know that this is literally the smoothest feeling phone that i've ever had the pleasure to use and that's because it's got a 144 hertz screen that you can lock to and i don't know if it's just a placebo effect because it really isn't that different to 120 hertz but it just feels smoother than any other phone i've ever used and as as you can see, it runs a fairly standard Android 13, but it has the usual Motorola improvements that I love, because whenever I use an Android phone that's not a Motorola, I miss all of them. It's got gestures like the double twist to enable the camera. Look at how easy that is. And it's also got the chop chop motion to turn on the flashlight. You've also got the hold down with three fingers to take a screenshot. And you've also got a really easy to use customization app. It's just little additions like this that makes Motorola's version of Android such a pleasure to use. However, however, there is one classic feature that unfortunately has been removed. Because I remember being able to use the swiping gesture where you swipe from one side of the display to the other to enable split screen with gesture controls on some other Motorola phones. So I don't know why with this new version that they've limited it to just if you're using the uh, three buttons on the bottom. This I'm absolutely not going to do. Because if you're using gesture navigation like any reasonable person in 2023 and you want to enable split screen the only way to do that now is be like any other android user and uh, press on this at the top and then enable split screen first world problems eh well some other motorola improvements include the glance lock screen which is one of the best implementations of an always on display because it doesn't reveal to the world what all your messages are like if you want to see what my facebook messages are you just uh, hold down there and it will show you. That is very, very cool. But for some reason, this always on display doesn't always stay on. And I think that's the case with all Motorola phones at this point. And I just think that, come on Motorola, it's 2023. It's time to get a proper always on display. Something that is great though, is that Motorola is now offering three years of Android updates and four years of security updates, which is fantastic. While that's not class leading, it still will definitely be long enough for most business users and 
no longer be a reason to avoid Motorola phones. But that's not it, because the Think Phone takes Motorola's improvements to the next level. But only if you've got a ThinkPad or another Windows PC, because I couldn't get any of the features to work with parallels on my MacBook for some reason. But um, as an Android user, if you've ever felt jealous of Apple's finely tuned integration between iPhone and Mac, this is the phone for you, because some of the features of Ready4 are absolutely insane. To activate the feature, all you have to do is press on this red button, like so. And now you are able to access things like a unified clipboard, AirDrop, which is called FileDrop, and also the ability to use the ThinkPhone's camera as a webcam, which is only a very recent addition on Macs. Another really cool feature is being able to run your phone's Android apps right on your PC, so you can use Instagram and TikTok just like how you would on your phone. All of these features are really great and really put Motorola's integration with Windows PCs a step above the competition. However, while these features that I've seen demoed very well, I can't show you right now because unfortunately, again, I have a Mac. What I can show you though is something that's perhaps even more impressive, and that's the desktop substitute aspect of Ready4. Similar to Microsoft's Continuum or more recently Samsung's DeX, Ready4 allows you to simply plug your phone into the display to turn it into a desktop computer. Over here I have a USB-C display and all you do is plug the phone in and you can already see Oh, wow. Not only is this phone powering the entire display, but I can connect a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse if I like. Over here, I'm using the phone as a touchpad, or you can even use it as a Wiimote-like pointer. And as you can see, it works really great. Let's just try using it. For example, let's open Chrome. It opens in this lovely window. That's the uh, page that I had opened before. And let's try another app. Let's try opening Apple Music for the lols. As we can see, Apple Music works okay. And you can scroll um, with two fingers like you would on a MacBook. So that all works brilliantly. Let's try one more app. Now let's try Instagram. And as we can see, Instagram works great. You can scroll like you'd expect. And it's a floating window as well, so you can multitask like you would on a computer. Games like Asphalt 9 and Civilization also work surprisingly well. So now let's try opening Civilization 6, which was originally a desktop game. Let's see if we get the desktop experience. Okay, so the graphics look really good. Let's move the settler over here and let's move my warrior over here. Let's explore and now let's settle. This looks like a nice spot. It really isn't, but uh, we'll just settle anyway. And as you can see, Civilization plays fantastically. And I guess this really shows the power of this chipset, despite being a generation old. What I do wonder though, as impressive as this is, does anyone actually use Ready4? Because apart from maybe plugging it into a TV or a projector to watch some content or to view a PowerPoint, there's no obvious use case for Ready4 for most people. If you're going to be working at a desk with a screen, chances are there's already going to be a desktop or a laptop. And in that situation, you're probably going to need something more powerful than the apps that uh, Android provides. I'm sure that some people love this feature, but apart from being a very impressive tech demo, I'm just not that convinced by its uh, usability. And now we come to the camera. And I have to be honest, I was a little bit worried by this aspect of the phone as the camera bump is so comparatively small compared to most other phones these days. But unless you are hoping for the pinnacle of mobile photography, you won't be disappointed. Photos are very comparable to an iPhone 14 Pro on the main 50 megapixel units. There's definitely the tendency to lift the shadows more than I like, especially in low light shots. But the highlight for me has to be how easy it is to engage this camera. As I've said before, the double twist just to open the camera is fantastic. It happens every time and it doesn't matter how you are holding the phone. You don't have to look at the screen to make sure that it's on. You don't have to look for a specific shortcut hardware button. It's just there and I love it so much. The camera interface also is pretty easy to use. It's pretty good. You've got some fun features hidden away like your spot color and your dual capture but that's fine. The wide camera unfortunately is a little bit lackluster but that honestly doesn't bother me too much as I rarely use the ultra wide cameras on my phones anyway and they're mostly pretty terrible uh, but what really shocked me was the video now I think that a lot of people know that iPhones typically have better video than Android phones I mean it's just the processing and also the emphasis and not just the stills of the camera 
but the video performance on the Think Phone for me it was pretty top notch. While you can engage 8K, I really wouldn't recommend that. Rather, if you choose 4K 30, not only will you have the most buttery smooth stabilization you've ever seen, I mean, it gives GoPro a run for its money, but you can also use HDR, which while it's unperfect, it gives you amazing dynamic range, and the whole package just works together in a really fantastic way. And now we come to battery life. Being a business phone, you would be expected to be on your feet all day, you can't have a phone that needs to be recharged halfway through. Well, even though I've locked the phone to a buttery smooth 144Hz perpetually, which does hurt the battery a lot, I've still managed to get an entire day's worth of use out of it quite easily from this phone. And that's because it's got a relatively large 5,000 milliamp battery. I really think that the battery life is quite fantastic. And if you leave your refresh rate on auto, I'm sure that it could be even better. So in conclusion, should you buy the Think Phone? Well, I haven't even come to the best part yet, which is the price. Because at $999 in Australia for the 256 gigabyte version, it is an absolute bargain. Not only is it basically half the price of an iPhone 14 Pro Max, but it also significantly undercuts Samsung's Galaxy S phones and also the Google Pixel phones, and they're all very much comparable. So if you have a PC or ThinkPad, I'd say yes, definitely get this phone because it would be perfect for you. Not only only will it last a long time, but it's tough, slim, attractive, it's super fast, it's got a great screen, it syncs to your PC in a fantastic way, and it's also got really good battery life. If you've got a Mac though, it's still good, but uh, if you want all of the ecosystem features that an iPhone affords you, then this unfortunately won't work for you. And that's unfortunate because BlackBerry had a very similar suite of features back in the day, where it would sync effortlessly with your phone, and it still worked on Max. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you're going to get the Think Phone. And on that note, toodaloo.